Well, just as God created us humans from a part of himself, recently scientists at Columbia University created a mini clone of a cancer patient to save their life. This means a perfect copy of a real human so they could test how the original patient's body would react to chemotherapy. But what does this tiny human clone, a carbon copy of a human, look like? Is it even alive now? Human cloning is banned in most countries. It is illegal. Non-cloning techniques to actually create a human being are considered unsafe and morally unacceptable. So what loophole allows these scientists, and now some companies, to create secret human clones? And if so, could it be that some of these clones are secretly living among us today? Modern science has advanced so much that many of us are not even aware of it. And this is just a glimpse of the latest technology. Alexia Lopez, a PhD student from the UK, recently discovered a gigantic megastructure in the universe that, according to the principles of physics, shouldn't even exist. This enormous structure is called the Big Ring, and we will discuss in detail how it will advance our understanding of the universe. But the progress science is making on a large scale is not as interesting as the technologies that have developed on a micro scale. Watch this video closely to see how this spring-like tiny thing is spinning rapidly on its own and how it is capturing a sluggish sperm and injecting it into an egg. Do you know what this thing is? Well, it is a tiny robot, a nanorobot or nanobot that scientists have created to target and destroy cancerous cells. You will find out in just a few minutes exactly how scientists are doing this, and it is going to blow your mind. So let's start with first big discovery, the big ring. Look at the night sky towards the north. If you carefully observe between the constellations of Booties and Ursa Major, you will see a large ring-like structure. This is called the Big Ring. It is so massive that estimates suggest that to measure its width, we would need to line up about 13,000 Milky Way galaxies. This is exactly what makes it go completely against the principles of physics. Let me explain how. There is an old principle in science called the cosmological principle, which says that on a larger scale, any space is not special. You will see almost the same things everywhere, and the laws of physics will work similarly everywhere. According to this principle, about 13.8 billion years ago, when the Big Bang occurred, which by the way gave birth to our universe, within microseconds, all the energy condensed into a single point was scattered in all directions, like a bomb explosion. This resulted in the formation of atoms of elements like hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen. That's why if you observe the early radiation of this universe, known as Cosmic Microwave Background Radiation, CMBR, you will see that, except for some small dark spots here and there, the radiation is spread equally in all directions. But the big ring megastructure that we have discovered goes completely against this cosmological principle because it represents a special place in the universe where a significant amount of mass is concentrated. Plus, if we only found one such structure, it would have been acceptable. It could be an anomaly, or we could have said that maybe scientists made a mistake in measuring it. However, scientists have found three other structures as well. The claws, the Great Wall, and the Giant Arc, which are nearly as large. So what now, you may ask, what difference does it make if the cosmological principle is disproved? Why should we care whether the universe is equally distributed or not? Well, without the cosmological principle, our already tough calculations in physics would become 10 times harder. Because when you conduct an experiment on Earth and then repeat it, let's say five years later, even if you do the experiment in the same lab during those five years, our Earth, the solar system it is part of, our Milky Way galaxy, and the local group of galaxies to which it belongs, would have moved millions and billions of kilometers in space. Now, if the cosmological principle did not exist, which states that the laws of physics are the same everywhere, we would have to account for all the movements of these systems. In experiments, the current position in our space also has to be considered every time for accurate calculations. This basically means that this single discovery has completely challenged our understanding of physics and the universe. And now only time will tell how scientists can get us out of this unique loophole. Now let's move on to the next major scientific achievement, which is nanobots. Despite the complexity of the human body, there are many surgeries where avoiding complications becomes extremely difficult. For example, right next to our ear, there is a parotid gland. If this gland develops a tumor and needs to be removed, performing a, such a surgery becomes extremely tricky even for experienced surgeons. 
If by mistake, the facial nerve is cut during tumor removal, the patient's half of the face will become paralyzed. Similarly, there are dangers during thyroid operations as well. If by mistake, the recurrent laryngeal nerve, which controls our vocal cords, is cut, the patient will become permanently mute. Now, being human means mistakes can happen. And that's why for many years, our medical professionals have been desperate to reduce the need for cutting and tearing so that patients do not end up regretting the treatment rather than the disease itself. That's why recently scientists have developed nanobots that, if injected into your body like any drug, can target and remove tumors in the parotid gland, thyroid, or anywhere else without any complications. This sperm nanobot fusion we saw at the beginning has recently been upgraded by scientists into a new treatment. They loaded a toxic anti-cancer drug called doxorubicin hydrochloride into sperm cells, then magnetically controlled iron oxide nanobots to pick up these anti-cancer sperm, and then directed these deadly sperm on a suicide mission into cancer cells to kill them. This has essentially solved two major side effects of anti-cancer drugs, because previously, anti-cancer drugs used to damage the surrounding healthy tissues, and these drugs mixed with our body fluids would get diluted, making the treatment ineffective. But this new technology, where we send our own sperm on a suicide mission, solves both problems, making it a highly effective drug delivery system. So to all the cancer patients out there, I would just say, hang in there. Soon, curing your cancer will be as easy as getting an injection at a nearby clinic. And now let's move on to the next big achievement, which is miniature nuclear batteries. Imagine a phone that never needs charging, a remote or watch that never needs a battery change, and a camera that won't run out of power while capturing your best moments. Well, guess what? In the next four to five years, this could actually become possible. A Chinese company, Beijing Betavolt, New Energy Technology Limited, has developed a nuclear-powered battery that is as small as a coin. Once manufactured, it can keep your devices charged for the next 50 years without any charging or maintenance. Recently, the World Nuclear Association also promoted it on their official LinkedIn handle. Looking at this, Beijing Beta Volt people are positive that they will start introducing these nuclear-powered batteries to the market by 2025. Now, how does it work? Well, it contains a radioactive isotope of nickel, nickel-63, which is placed between two synthetically made diamond layers. When nickel-63 decays, it releases high-energy beta particles, or simply high-speed electrons. These electrons knock out electrons from the diamond atoms, causing them to be expelled. In this way, electrons accumulate on one side of the diamond structure and are deficient on the other side. So if you connect these two regions of low and high density with a wire, current will start flowing. Technically, this is exactly similar to solar cells. The only real difference is that instead of using sunlight photons to knock out electrons, a radioactive isotope's beta particles are used here. B. But you might wonder how such a small battery, the size of a coin, can fit in nuclear power. Given that nuclear power plants usually require vast setups and thousands of safety precautions, including cooling the core by immersing it in water, and so on. The Beijing Beta Volt has achieved this by directly converting nuclear energy into electrical energy. Unlike traditional nuclear power plants where nuclear energy is first converted to thermal energy and then to electrical energy. Here, Beijing Beta Volt uses weak nuclear force, the fourth fundamental force of nature, to power these batteries. Hence, these batteries are very small. However, since radioactivity is involved, you might wonder about safety. Radioactivity often brings concerns of cancer. In this battery, because Nickel-63's radioactive core is used, which we have seen is powered by weak nuclear force, it emits beta particles with low penetrating power. These beta particles are not as dangerous as the strong nuclear forces produced by uranium-235 cores used in traditional nuclear plants. Thus, they cannot penetrate even substances as hard as diamonds so there's no chance these beta particles will breach the protective casing of the beta volt battery. All in all, these next generation batteries are quite safe. Still, as an extra precaution, beta volt will initially supply these batteries only for medical devices and space tech. After thorough testing, we might see these batteries in common consumer products. Cloning breakthrough now, let's move on to our fourth and most important achievement, which is a cloning breakthrough. 
As we knew at the beginning, for many years, human cloning or even animal cloning in general was considered illegal. But recent news suggests that secret cloning has become quite a flourishing industry and people are making substantial money from it. So how is this happening? In 1996 to 97, when the first cloned animal, Dolly the sheep, was introduced, some scientists immediately wanted to test the same cloning technology on humans. They believed this technique could help infertile couples. Around this time, an American cloning company called CloneAid was born and immediately started using the cloning technique, somatic cell nuclear transfer, on humans as well. Continuing with this technique, they would take tissue samples from the parents and then extract the nucleus from one tissue cell and inject it with the nucleus from another tissue. They would then grow these cells to the embryo stage and implant them into a surrogate mother's uterus. The result was that the baby born would be a perfect clone of the parent, looking exactly like the parent from whom the nucleus was taken. In simpler terms, it would be a perfect twin of the parent, just from a different timeline. Using this technology, CloneAid's CEO, Brigitte Boisselier, claims that they have already created at least 20 human clones with the first baby, Eve, born on December 26, 2002. This means that today, Eve could be a 22-year-old college student living somewhere among us, possibly unaware that she is a clone, but cloning is banned, right? So how is this possible? It turns out that cloning is banned in only 46 of the 195 countries we have today. As a result, CloneAid has developed Eve and other clone babies outside their home country, the USA. Additionally, among the 46 countries that have banned it, almost all only ban human cloning, not animal cloning. Hence, cloning techniques are being polished through trials on animals in various countries. In fact, you might not know this, but many foreign celebrities today collect tissue samples from their pets at the end of their lives and send them to US-based companies like Viagen Pets, China-based companies like Sinogene, or South Korea-based companies like Som Biotech. Within just two to three months, cloned puppies of their deceased pets are delivered to their homes. So today we have advanced in cloning to such an extent that if this ban were lifted, we could create a perfect carbon copy of any human. In fact, as I mentioned earlier, the scientists from Columbia University who created a miniature clone of a cancer patient demonstrate our ability in human cloning. The lead scientist, Professor Gada Wanjek-Navkoic and their team first grew tissues from the patient's heart, bone, liver, and skin in four separate compartments. They then connected these tissues through artificial blood vessels and circulated the patient's blood in them. They tested an anti-cancer drug, doxorubicin, and compared the results with real-life human trials. The results showed that the miniature organ system reacted just like a real human body in clinical trials for doxorubicin. This indicates that, barring ethical concerns, we are very close to becoming godlike. So friends, make sure to share this video with your friends and family. As you know, our mission is to spread scientific thinking in India and develop a scientific culture that will empower every individual in their life and also create brilliant minds and scientists for our country. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Until then, take care.